Book Readings with Miss Bernard. Well, hello, hello, and welcome to another Book Readings with Miss Bernard. Today is day five of our Black History Month series. Today's story is Because Claudette, written by Tracy Baptiste, illustrated by Tanya Engel. Oh, Tanya Engel was also the illustrator of Your Legacy. The book we read on day three of our Black History Month series. Today's book is about a very, very brave little girl. We've all heard about Rosa Parks and how she was arrested because she refused to give up her seat on the bus for a white passenger. But the very first person to be arrested challenging the Montgomery bus's unfair segregation rules was a brave 15-year-old girl named Claudette Colvin. She did this nine months before Rosa Parks did it, and this is her story. Let's begin. Because 15-year-old Claudette Colvin didn't give up her seat on the bus for a white person on March 2, 1955, she was arrested. Because she was arrested, her parents asked a lawyer named Fred Gray for help. Mr. Gray wanted to know more about Claudette, so he asked fellow activist Rosa Parks to meet with her. Because Mrs. Parks was a member of the civil rights group, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or NAACP, she invited Claudette to one of their youth meetings. Claudette liked the meetings and kept going. Some nights, the meetings ran late. When that happened, Claudette stayed at Miss Parks' home. Claudette chatted while Miss Parks sewed, and the two became friends. This was a good thing because Claudette's classmates were upset with her for causing trouble and Claudette found herself more and more alone. But Claudette wasn't alone because she had studied Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass at school. She learned how they worked hard and caused trouble so black people would be treated fairly. That year, Aurelia Browder Mary Louise Smith, Susie McDonald, and Rosa Parks also caused trouble when they said no to giving up their bus seats. Because of them, Claudette truly wasn't alone. People had enough of the unfair bus laws. So many came to Montgomery, Alabama to talk about what they could do. Because the meetings were organized by churches, many preachers came too. One was a relatively unknown young preacher named Martin Luther King Jr. Because Dr. King was an electric speaker, he got people excited to take action. They decided on a bus boycott. Professor Joanne Robinson was ready to organize it. A year before, she had tried and failed to get W.A. Gale, the mayor of Montgomery, to change the bus law. Because churches could pass out flyers on Sunday, the boycott was planned for Monday, December 5th. When the boycott began, many people needed to travel far, so car rides were arranged. Because there were not enough cars for everyone, a lot of people walked. As shoes got worn down, people all over the country sent donations. Because Mayor Gale still refused to change the law, Fred Gray challenged it in court. Because Claudette was impressive and engaging, Mr. Gray asked her to be the final witness on the stand. Claudette was so convincing the judges ordered a change to the bus law. When the city and the state refused to follow the court's orders, the boycott went on for many more months. 
The case then went to the Alabama Supreme Court. Those judges agreed the bus laws needed to be changed. Mayor Gale challenged the ruling again, but the court forced him to comply. Because of that, on December 20th, 1956, the bus boycott ended. Claudette learned about this, like most other people, from reading the morning newspaper. On December 21st, 1956, anyone could sit wherever they liked on the bus. And all of it happened because of Claudette. The end. <laughs> what a wonderful story about a brave little girl. I read in an interview with Claudette Colvin, she said, Whenever people ask me, why didn't you get up when the bus driver asked you? I say, it felt as though Harriet Tubman's hands were pushing me down on one shoulder and Sojourner Troop's hands were pushing me down on the other shoulder. I felt inspired by these women because my teacher taught us about them in so much detail. So see, Claudette was inspired by those women and then she was an inspiration herself and inspired women such as Rosa Parks to also fight for what's right, <laughs> even though it was dangerous. <laughs> so today I just want everyone to know that you are never too young to take a stand and make a change in this world for what is right. All right, this has been another Book Readings with Miss Bernard. Come on back tomorrow to hear day six of our Black History Month series. I hope you have a wonderful, awesome day. Bye-bye.